Here's the seven minute introduction to tensor products. So there's been some discussion in class about exactly what a, a tensor product is. So here's a quick introduction. And I'm not going to be able to really give an actual definition, but we'll at least be able to learn how to calculate with things involving the tensor product symbol. So recall what a linear map is. We're going to start with some vector spaces, uh, vector space V, vector space W. And a function f from v to w is linear if it respects the structure of the objects. That is, f takes sums to sums and scalar multiplication to scalar multiplication. Now, a bilinear map is a somewhat more complicated object. We're going to have three vector spaces, u, v, and w. And a map f, which takes a vector in u and a vector in v to a vector in w, is bilinear if it satisfies these properties. Now, these properties look a little bit confusing, but all they're saying is that f of u, v is linear in the u coordinate if you hold v fixed, and it's linear in the v coordinate if you hold u fixed. So it's linear in both coordinates, but, but separately. So now what's the tensor product of u and v? We write that with a multiplication symbol in a circle, u tensor v. Well, u tensor v is a vector space so that bilinear maps from u and v to w are the same thing as linear maps from u tensor v into w. So u tensor v is a brand new vector space, and trying to find what that vector space is is, is a little bit problematic. The upshot of this, if we can actually build this vector space u tensor v, it means that we can take multilinear algebra, which looks more complicated than linear algebra, and put it inside linear algebra. That means that multilinear algebra becomes just a, a special case of linear algebra. Bilinear maps aren't any different than certain kinds of linear maps out of these tensor products. Now, we're not actually going to be able to construct the tensor product. But I am going to tell you how to calculate with tensors. So a vector in u tensor v is just going to be a sum of little u's tensor little v's for u a vector in big U and v a vector in big V. And these symbols, u tensor v, well, they're going to satisfy some properties. So if you have a vector u and a vector v1 and v2 in big V, then u tensor v1 plus u tensor v2 is u tensor the sum v1 plus v2. Similarly, if you've got vectors u1 and u2 in u and a vector v in v, then u1 tensor v plus u2 tensor v is u1 plus u2, all of that tensor v. And finally, if you've got a scalar alpha and vector u in big U and a vector v in big V, then alpha u tensor v is the same thing as alpha times the vector u tensor v, which is the same thing as u tensor the vector alpha v. Now, this looks kind of complicated, but it's all just rigged so that linear maps out of tensor products are exactly the same thing as bilinear maps. The idea is that these rules for tensor products just mirror the properties that bilinear maps have. So, for example, if we've got a bilinear map f from u cross v into w, one of the properties it satisfies is this, that f of u, v1 plus v2, is the same thing as f u v1 plus f u v2. Now there's a corresponding linear map, which I'm going to abuse notation, but I'll also call it f. f goes out of the tensor product into w, and f of u tensor v1 plus v2, well, the tensor transforms in this way where u tensor that sum is u tensor v1 plus u tensor v2. f is now linear, and f applied to the sum of those two vectors is f of the first plus f of the second. And you can see that that looks exactly the same thing as the bilinear map up above. So let's try to do a concrete example. R2 is spanned by two vectors, E1 and E2. Those are the two basis vectors for R2. Now R2 tensor R2 is spanned by four vectors, E1 tensor E1, E1 tensor E2, E2 tensor E1, E2 tensor E2. Now what do I mean by this? I mean that any sum of vectors in R2, tensor vectors in R2, can be rewritten as a sum of these four vectors using the properties that tensor products satisfy. For example, how do these things add? E1 tensor E1 plus E1 tensor E2 is E1 tensor the sum E1 plus E2. And by using these kind of properties, 
any sum of tensors can be rewritten as a sum of those four tensors up above. Ah, just a warning though. You can't combine E1 tensor E1 with E2 tensor E2. Everything in R2 tensor R2 is a sum of the four basis vectors E1 tensor E1, E1 tensor E2, E2 tensor E1, E2 tensor E2. But not everything in R2 tensor R2 can be written as a vector in R2 tensor a vector in R2. Sometimes you have to write them as sums of those tensors. So here's a very concrete question. What's E1 plus E2 tensor E1 plus E2? And, and by this I mean how could we write this in terms of the basis on the previous slide? Well, we can expand it out using the properties of tensor product. And this is going to be the same thing as E1 tensor E1 plus E1 tensor E2 plus E2 tensor E1 plus E2 tensor E2. And we shouldn't be too surprised about this. Because after all, if F were a bilinear map and we wanted to know what F of A plus B, A plus B was, well, we just use the properties of bilinearity to write it out as f of a a plus f of a b plus f of b a plus f of b b. So again, the properties of bilinear maps are being mirrored in the properties of tensor product. The tensor product is just rigged so that maps out of tensor products are the same thing as bilinear maps. Now, here's another question. What's the dimension of u tensor v? Now, the answer is that it's the product of the dimensions of u and v. And this really is different than the sum of vector spaces. When you take the Cartesian product or the sum of vector spaces, the dimensions add. The dimension of u plus v is the dimension of u plus the dimension of v. So the tensor product is really a more complicated beast. For example, the tensor product of R3 and R with R3 is nine-dimensional, not six-dimensional. And as a final puzzle, Note that the dimension of u tensor v is the same thing as the dimension of linear maps from u to v. And this seems like kind of a coincidence. So as a puzzle, you should think about how u tensor v might relate to linear maps from u to v. Now they have the same dimension. They're not naturally isomorphic, but they can be related. So that's something kind of fun for you to, to think about. And I'll stop there.